It was a seaworthy little craft, in bad need of a coat of paint, but spotlessly clean and maintained. I didn't know the first thing about sailing a dinghy. The kid looked about 11 or 12. He was fishing with the intense concentration of someone who had all the time in the world. You want to buy some fish? Nah, I don't like fish. What's your name? Rio. It means river. What about you? George. It means... Uh... Well, it, it's just a name. Do you know anything about a forthcoming eclipse? No, but that explains why the weather's about to get real bad. Rio, it's a beautiful day. There's no more than a whisker of cloud in the sky. Trust the man, it's going to get real bad. Do you know anything about pirate treasure? Man, that's all stories. There's no such thing as a real pirate treasure. No school today? No, sir. What about your education? I can fish, sail, and swim. I've been looking after myself since I was six, and I'm bilingual. Aren't you a little overqualified for a beach bum? Well, you know, there's a lot of competition. Is it true that Captain Ketch lived around here? That's right. That's his house up on the hill. It's a museum now. Yeah? That's exactly what I need. Thanks, kid. You won't get inside, you know. The old ladies close it down. Who are these old ladies you mentioned? Miss Frost and Miss Mina Ketch. How come the old ladies closed the museum? It's Branson's doing. He have the plans for redeveloping the museum. They kind of regret it, you know. The man's a crook. What do you know about Captain Ketch? Just what everybody knows around here. He was a pirate and get himself hung. Will you help me get those plans? I don't want to go nowhere near that man. He promised to draw me when he found the fish I left in his sleeping bag. What are you doing with the theodolite? Surveying the old house. I got great plans for this place. Oh yeah? You bet. Take a look around. What do you see? Paradise. I see opportunity. This place is ripe for development. I like it just the way it is. And that's where we differ. You see, Mr. Stobart, I'm what you might call a man of vision. I see a great future for Ketch's Landing, and it all starts here, with that house. Say, was that kid giving you trouble? The fisher boy? No, he was very polite. Ha! He's a juvenile delinquent. I suppose he told you I was a crook. Oh no, he's a good kid. He'd never say anything like that. Sure he would, the little punk. How do you survey a house like that? I put a target reflector on the end of one of the flagpoles up there on the house. I sight on it from various locations through the theodolite, record the angles along the baseline, and triangulate them to give me the exact position of the target. Understand? Why the end of the flagpole? Wouldn't it have been better on a corner of a wall or something? Are you a surveyor? Uh, no, my degree's in law. Then shut up. Tell me about the two old ladies. Who? The Ketch sisters. One of them's crazy as a coot, and the other will turn you to stone if you're not careful. Can I take a look at your plans? No way! What interest would they be to you, anyhow? I've always had a secret desire to be a surveyor. You have? Sure. I mean, you surveyors are just like the great explorers, aren't you? Henry the Navigator, Vasco da Gama, Chris Columbus. Maybe you don't sail uncharted seas or discover new continents, but you're okay in my book. Horseshit. You just stay away from those plans, you hear? Catch you later, Bronson.
A cute little putty tat. Actually, no. It was a mangy old flea bag. It was busily torturing a red ball. Hi, puss. Want to play? Hey, cat. Watch where you're putting those claws. Two old ladies were sitting outside the house, enjoying afternoon tea. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Good afternoon, Mr. Stobart. Would you care for tea? No, thank you, ma'am. I don't like tea. I've been talking to Rio, the little fisher boy. I'll thank you not to mention that little wretch in my presence. Dirty little whelk. Nasty fishy boy. That will do, Mina. I gather you don't have much time for the little boy. That child is a delinquent, Mr. Stobart. Yeah, well, he's only, what, eleven, maybe? A knave with one hand on the tops. What is it about Rio that you don't like, Miss Frost? Well, once upon a time, he and Emily... Be quiet this instant, Mina! Is that your cat? Yes, it is. It's Ruddles. Do you like cats, Mr. Strobart? You bet. Especially spit roast. What can you tell me about Emily? Emily? What business can she be of yours? Her parents were killed in a typhoon. We, as her only living relatives, took it upon ourselves to raise the child. That's good to know Charity isn't dead. Oh, but she is. Washed overboard in the typhoon. Mr. Strobart wasn't talking about Emily's mother. He was being sarcastic. What else can you tell me about Emily? How dare you pry into our family in this way? I refuse to answer any more of your impertinent questions. Can you tell me anything about Captain Ketch? More than you can tell me about your great-great-great-great-grandfather, no doubt. You're his descendant? Certainly. Captain Ketch was born in Dorset, England, in the reign of King Henry VIII. His family were undistinguished farmers, but young Frederick Ketch decided to go to sea. We have plenty of seamen in our family, Mr. Stobart. Are you interested in history, Mr. Stobart? Yes, I am. You were telling me about Captain Ketch. Do go on. Oh, yes. He sailed under Hawkins. Jim Hawkins? John Hawkins, one of the great traders of the Elizabethan age. In 1568, Frederick Ketch was a young man serving aboard the Jesus, Hawkins' flagship. They sailed from England to Africa and across the wide Atlantic to these islands. Ketch was never to see the shores of England again. How come Ketch never made it home? Because the Spaniards sank the Jesus in an act of treachery. You said Hawkins' fleet traded between Africa and the Indies. What was it they were trading? Black men with no shirts. You have to understand, Mr. Stobart, that this was the 16th century. That doesn't alter the fact that Hawkins and Ketch were slavers and pirates. Would it surprise you to learn that Hawkins was also a devoutly religious man? He transported slaves in a ship named after Jesus Christ. In my book, that makes him a hypocrite. What happened to Ketch? Was he killed? Oh no. He got away and returned to this island, to this very house. The Frederick Ketch Memorial Museum. Is it true Frederick Ketch was a pirate? Frederick Ketch was emphatically not a pirate. They hanged him, you know, down there on the beach in front of his family. Didn't bother with the trial, just whipped him out from his breakfast table and hoisted him up in chains. Well, if he wasn't a pirate, what did they hang him for? Envy. Pure, green-eyed envy. He had been a successful privateer, you see, and had accumulated great wealth. As rich as a mink in a paddock. Shut up, Mina. Yes, Frost. The small-minded governor and his lackeys wanted his money, trumped up some ridiculous charge about breaking the conditions of his letter of mark, and hanged him like a common thief. The blackguards! 
Letter of Mark? The document that permitted him to engage and destroy the enemies of the crown. The difference between a lawful privateer and a pirate. Yoo-hoo! Sorry, Frost. Well, why didn't Ketch just say, take a hike, guys, I've got a pirating license? Frederick Ketch was not a pirate! But he did show them his letter of mark. But they destroyed it and hanged him anyway. It was an old house. It was locked. The house is closed. How come? It is undergoing refurbishment. Oh, of course. This must be the place Bronson's surveying. The intention is to prepare the museum for the new century. The Frederick Ketch Memorial Museum. It would look nice in neon. A museum for a pirate? There was a stony silence. As I have already told you, sir, he was not a pirate. It's precisely the sort of vile misrepresentation that Mr. Bronson is seeking to rebalance. Oh? How? Mr. Bronson has kindly agreed to undertake the museum's refurbishment at a very reasonable price. He understands the importance of a sense of history. Funny. That's not the impression I got of Bronson at all. He also understands spherical geometry. Mina? Well, he does. Listen, ma'am. I came a long way to visit this place. If we make an exception in your case, everyone will want to get in. Pardon me, but I didn't exactly have to fight my way through the crowds. You're the second visitor we've had today. No, I'm sorry, but it's impossible. It was a closed window. The window was locked. It was a sturdy, extendable ladder. The ladder extended easily. You there? What are you doing? Pardon me, ladies. I was just going to climb your ladder. I'm helping Bronson. Oh, you're not like him, are you? He's very polite, isn't he, Frost? And he has dimples when he smiles. The flagpole had a reflective target on the end for Bronson to use as a reference point. I couldn't reach the flagpole, and a bush stopped me from moving the ladder across. It was a flagpole, one of a pair. I couldn't reach it. The house's windows looked out over the bay. The windows were way out of reach. If I could get up to them, maybe I could climb in that way. A large tree stood beside the house with a suggestive U formed by the branches. I couldn't think of any reason to climb the tree. How come the old ladies closed the museum? It's Bronson's doing. He must the plans for redeveloping the museum. Oh, I know all about Mr. Bronson's plans. Tell me about your friend Emily. Why are you so interested in Emily Ketch? Emily Ketch? A descendant of Captain Ketch, the pirate? Yeah. Well, it doesn't bother you? Why should it? We don't responsible for our ancestors. I think Bronson is trying to cheat those sweet, vulnerable old ladies. That's a little unfair, isn't it? Okay. He's trying to cheat those seriously demented, poisonous old ladies. <laughs> you have to admire his acumen. 